And thank you for staying with us. The Bayasa State House of Assembly has approved a request from Governor Julia Dewey to collect 2.9 billion dollar loan to buy operation of vehicles for the governor, deputy governor, and other top government personnel. The motion received unanimous support from the lawmakers. It must be noted that this new governor has not presented the budget for the state for the year 2020. In light of this, I must ask, where are the priorities of these leaders? And joining me still to discuss this is political analyst Adan Jamanze. Thank you for staying with us, Adan. Thank you. And also legal practitioner Raymond Nkanebe. Thank you very much, Raymond, for staying with us. Now, Thank interestingly, you. as of February 2020, um, Dewey, the governor of Delta State, Bayelsa State, did say that he will soon present the budget for the state. But however, now he's talking about a loan of, for official vehicles. How do we begin to reconcile this too? Adan, I'll go with you first. Three weeks. Yes. Into uh, his tenure as a governor. 2.9 billion for cars for himself, deputy governor, officials. I'm asking, I'm, I mean, sometime in January, the NLC asked for payment of salaries. That hasn't been, we've not had anything yet. So the cars that are being bought, I always ask this question, when the outgoing gov uh, government, don't they leave the cars? Why do we have to spend 2.9 billion? And then the speaker of uh, Bielsa House said, oh, the, 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 uh, the loan is spread into three years to pay. Uh, it, it, I just find it, I think it's absolutely wrong, uh, three weeks into, into, your, into your tenure to start asking for a loan and the state hasn't seen a, a budget. It's, it's, it's discouraging. Raymond, your thoughts on this? Well, uh, well, I could just say one that shall never end. Well, Mr. Diri is acting to in line with the typical character of the Nigerian politician. I don't know if he's asking for cars to, for who to drive to the assembly to present the 2020 budget for, for debate. You see, like you pointed out, there's a clear case of uh, misplacement of priority. Uh, these are states whose current budget stands at about 127 billion naira. Now, for a, a, for a disciplined governor who understands the debt burden of the state, would he be concerned with, with vehicles at this time, or how to uh, perhaps uh, defray the, 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 the debt uh, uh, deficit of, of the state? So it's, it's quite unfortunate, and to the, to the, uh, the fact that the House of Assembly uh, gave a voice vote to it, to it uh, shows you how, um, how, the, the, how whenever, when the parliament fails to play their critical role of playing, um, of, um, of um, Checking uh, of checking the excesses of the executive, we have a very sorry, we have a very a very terrible democracy on our hands. I, I would expect a, a, a responsible House of Assembly yesterday to have to have voted against that proposal, yes. at least to, to 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 give a sense of that they are an assembly that are ready to work and who understand the the the, the, the amount of work in their hands. But you remember the, the current speaker, uh, the person who moved that motion was a former speaker of the house. But because of, due to a political arrangement, he had to step down as a speaker. You understand? Yes. So that gives you a sense of what is happening in Bielsa State. Is a, is a, is a family, uh, is a family kind of government. Now, now, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit goes. concerned the fact that, um, that Governor Diri has not done up to a month in office yes. now. Do, do you think, I mean, this position is trying to take, um, the, the, what, what, what do you think is paramount for him right now? I mean, less than a month in office, and this is the way he's chosen to go. Is, is this the right decision, or are they entitled to this? Well, Ad okay. Are they entitled to buying cars? Yes, cars, in for, for, for public use, definitely. I mean, the government is entitled to buying cars, not that ridiculous amount, but you know, this is just a new, you're a new governor. Yeah. There are, there are things that you've inherited from the past governments, and it's something that, again, you have to show that you're ready to work. You're, but now it just looks like you're playing into the hands of what your opposition is saying that you, you are. And it's actually sad to see because there, we haven't seen the bill for the states. We haven't, um, they, they, I don't think they have um, implemented the new um, minimum wage. Minimum wage. There are salaries that are being owed. These are conversations that should take front seats yes. beyond before buying cars. So it's it's actually a very sad situation, honestly. Now, do you think that he, with, with this happening, do you think it's the right choice for for Bielsa's? Because ma many Bielsa's did kick when when he was well, proclaimed the governor of the state. I mean, what would you think to that? Well, I'm not from Bielsa State, yes. and um, it is for Bielsa's to elect their leader. Now, the question would be: Was he actually? Was it the was actually the choice of Biosans at the last election 
that is also debatable. When you look at how the when you look at the voting numbers, it gives you a sense of the fact that Bayesians are no longer they no longer want the PDP government. But unfortunately, Providence uh, proved otherwise and forced PDP back on them. And if you notice, if you heard what the APC man was saying in the report, he was like that this is why Bayesians rejected them. Unfortunately, they have come back and they have stuck to their to their to their to their old tricks. So it's quite unfortunate. Um, and it's it's the the government had just started. If Bayesians will have to protest, they have to wait until twenty. 2023. But maybe the man has a long time to correct, uh, to make amends and then warm up himself into the heart of I'm actually Bios interested in seeing that. Okay. Because I, I, it's, he's only already left an impression. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's actually very sad to see. Because Bayelsa is a state, is one of those states in Nigeria that we, we don't hear much about, yeah. but there's a lot happening in this state. And yeah. If, as a leader, this is one of the things that I believe that he should, that should be his focus. And I, I'm hoping that, let's not judge, but so far, it, it's not it's, impressive. It's not. Okay, now, in, interestingly, the All Progressives Party in reacting to this news stated that DW is an illegitimate government. Now, do, do, do you believe this is true? No, for me, that is a clear case of, that is, I, that, I, I, when I saw it, I almost called it treason. It's treasonable for you to, uh, for, for you to describe a government that is properly constituted as uh, illegitimate. If no, because you need to bear in mind that there, there was protest that, that mm. rocked the state when he was declared governor. I mean, you should, you should remember well, that. Well, that so, should be, yeah. to the extent that the Supreme Court had dropped, the, the, has, has, has put a stop to that case, that automatically um, settles, settles the point. So, yeah, what are his, I don't think the question of illegitimacy yeah. comes into the matter. The APC guy was just trying to be um, mischievous. It was trying to be mischievous. And any, any thoughts on this? It's, it's always a rat race with mm. these political parties. Mm. Everybody is trying to make sure that their point is being made. Not the right choice of words, yeah. but you know, we, there was a, the, every, the Bielsa people had a cho um, had uh, voted, and the Supreme Court made his own judgment. So mm. I think it's I think they should still give him a chance, and let's see. How that goes. Now, interestingly, you did mention that you still give him a chance because during his inauguration, I remember him clearly saying, you know, like he promised um, useful programs for the state to rekindle the hope of the people. Now, do you think this, this might just be well, that, that a might starting be. point to, to all of his promises of hope for the people of Bielsa? Uh, uh, buying cars for himself and for members of the they, state. They need to the perform their functions, well, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't agree. If for me, that's, uh, this whole vehicle stuff might just be another red herring. We don't know what they need money for. You just say you want to buy cars. Who is going to follow through and see what cars are they buying? Are they buying escalates for how much? You understand? When you look at the amount that's voted for this vehicle, then you ask yourself, what kind of car are they, are they buying? So I think it's just a kind of perhaps appeasing the boys are having come into having come into power and then so they can just vote. So it cannot be it cannot be a, a, a signature of those of his good intentions mm -hmm. for the state. You have to take into consideration how fast it was approved. Yes. yes. That's another thing because yes. to, why, why so fast? And also who moved the motion? Who moved the motion? His yeah, former exactly. position in the, in, the, in the scheme of things. He comes from the same, same place from the, with the governor. Exactly. So you, it's, it's, it's just... I, and I you mean, have the speaker justifying mm, yes. that it's a three-year tenure. That's, mm, that's the funny. Yes. Like, why are you justifying that it's a three? Because, you know, people are always going to ask this question. Yes. 2.9 billion for cars. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Well, well I'm, I'm interested. In, many have stated that the legislature is fast becoming a stooge of the executive. Now, could, could this actually be truth in this case? Because, I mean, it's already the, the third month of the year and no budget has been presented and now a loan for official cars. It is. It's a clear case of the, the legislature, like I told you, uh, failing to understand its constitutional role in any democracy. You understand? We saw what Mr. Donald Trump had been going through with the Democrats. In, in, in Congress, you understand? That's a clear case of a legislature in, in, in action. You might not get all that you want, but you give a sense of, yes, we are actually putting, playing that role of checks and balances on the executive. Look at what's happening in Cross River State as we speak. A session of the House of Assembly woke up for a moment and said, we're not going to confirm someone who the NJC has sent to become the chief judge. And all of a sudden, the governor, uh, the governor ratifies that. So it gives you a sense of how members of, especially in the states, how members of the state assembly and their governors have become, uh, have become uh, how do they, how do they say it now? They, 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 they have become partners in crime, if I might use that word. And do, you th do you think the legislature has become a stooge to, to the executive as it stands right now? That, I mean, that's what, that's what we're seeing. That's what we see every day when we open the news, when we turn on our TV, that's what we see. So it, we ask ourselves, do we need to redefine these rules? 
again yeah. for everybody to understand what their duty is yeah. because again this Three arms are still there to serve the people, but yeah. it seems that they are serving themselves. Yeah. So but it's, it's still a question of the devolution of power. Power seems to be concentrated in the, in the center, the, the executive. How do we begin to resolve this issue of, you know, separation of power, the devolution of power, the executive, the judiciary? The, like, how do we go about it? What must be done? The only thing that the Constitution has actually assigned these roles. Like I told you, it's a question of those who occupy the offices. But we, we don't yes, see that. It, it's I mean, a it, question it's, of those who occupy the offices. Okay. You understand? You see, government cannot work in a vacuum. Human beings run government. So uh, you might have good laws, but bad men might make good laws to become bad laws. You understand? So it goes to the question of leadership, the kind of persons who we elect into leadership positions. What is happening in the Biasa State now, the whole PDP and APC, you can see they, they're just like the, some people say, Different between six and half a dozen. They are the same. They are the same people. So I think Nigerians, like I've always said on this platform, Nigerians have to go back home and be doing serious thinking as the kind of leadership that they want and voting the right kind of leaders who would uh, who would uh, who would actually function like true leaders or servant leaders of the people. You know, I mean, you're very right. We know this, the leadership has to be ruled by people, but this is where the this is where we need to start understanding that. We, in Nigeria, we do not hold our leaders accountable. Accountability is important. So even when you elect a leader, even when we go back and we think and we elect a leader, if our leader is not performing, yeah. we need to hold that leader accountable for his actions. If not, we still get the same thing year in, year We're just going to keep getting the same thing. So like you said, it's on paper. Yes. We're not practicing it. Interestingly, three months into his, his governorship, the, the, the state budget is not being passed. And a loan of 2.9 billion naira suddenly approved. What, what does it say of the kind of government we well, have? Well, the, the Biosas case might be peculiar given the, uh, the, the political activities in that state in the last couple of months. Okay. You understand? They are, they, they are, they are, they are, they are, their elections are off cycle. You understand? Why most states were passing their budget last year? Uh, Biasa State was busy, was in the political... Was yeah, but isn't that why the state, assembly, the state mm. assembly should to mm. seek to the passage of the, mm. of the state budget? No, what Other happened than approving is, the $2.9 billion loan for the purchase it, of cars. It's the executive that sends the budget to, to parliament, yes. not the other way around. You understand? Uh, though you might argue that they could have gotten the executive to get out the budget, but I don't think they can compel the executive to, to do that. So uh, I want to explain that away by the nature of the, uh, the peculiar case of Bielsa, you understand, it has been a political uh, beehive the last couple of months. So that's why this governor, once, once he came in, he was saying that he's going to uh, present the budget. Mm -hmm. So I assume they're actually working on it now, and the next couple of months, we should see the budget being laid in front of the I'm actually house. interested in seeing mm -hmm. that budget, yes. because we, it's very important. But again, because of how fast uh, the loan was approved, mm -hmm. that should also tell you the kind of people we have mm -hmm. in the house, yes. in the Bielsa house. Mm -hmm. Because if you're very quick to approve a loan and publicly defend it, then I mean, it's, it says something about mm. the people that we've elected. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually very, very interested to see the budget passed and see how the Biosa people take it. Now, in my own opinion, I, I feel, I think 2.9 billion naira's loan to spend on cars is, is a bit too high. Given that this state is still battling to pay salaries, there's still IDP situations in the state, yeah. how do they intend to pay back this loan? Well, like the same question with the national with the national debt yeah. is is the same thing. People just borrow and then roll the can down the road, hoping that the future will so something great will certainly happen and this debt will be defrayed. Unfortunately, like I, told, I don't know, uh, Delta St uh, Biosa State is an oil producing state, and they uh, they have a thirteen percent derivative fund. But then, how how if they were actually uh, executing uh, putting these funds to to good use? How were they able to rack up to 127 billion naira as a debt? So it, that tells you that whatever revenue that they might, they might hope to get might not be channeled, channeled into servicing this debt. So like I said before now, it's also a burden for the future, unfortunately. Ada, quickly, your thoughts on this, I mean. I, 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 Unpaid salaries, I was, IDP yes. situations, yes. 2.9 billion naira on mm. cars. cars. Mm. It's, 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 it's just wrong. Mm. And if you recall, during one of the terrible uh, weather periods we had in Nigeria, Bayelsa was one of the states that had terrible erosion problems, that had to shut down schools yeah. Yeah. for a couple of weeks. Now, if, if, you're, if you're passing budget, if you're getting loans, I'm thinking that you should be putting the money into some of these situations. Salary, um, uh, civil servants protested 
uh, in January for lack of, uh, pay, uh, lack of payment of salaries. Mm -hmm. And we haven't done that. And they were expecting that even when the salaries come, it should come with the new minimum wage. Yes. We haven't heard anything about these things, and all we're hearing is a 2.9 billion. It's, it's, it's actually, I'm finding it difficult to comprehend, actually. Adan Jamanze, <laughs> political analyst, thank, thank you for joining us on Plus you. Politics and for your contribution, and also legal practitioner Raymond Nkanebe. Thank you very much, Raymond, for being with us on the show this evening. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Don't stay with us. The national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Zoshomele, has condemned the attempt to remove him from office by opposing elements within the party. The chairman speaking to the newsmen in Abuja shortly after meeting with President Mohamed Ubari says the attempt using an FCT High Court to suspend him from office is illegal and was orchestrated by enemies of the party with an aim at destabilizing the APC. I came to brief the president as I always do on matters affecting the, the party. And um, I did that was just two days ago. Yes. And just yesterday morning, uh, suddenly uh, I, I saw in the news that um, an FCT High Court has restrained me from uh, or suspended me as national chairman. And uh, the person who went to court includes uh, one of my vice chairmen, uh, not East, uh, one Mr. Mustafa, and uh, four others. I was thinking about because in that state suit, they, 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 they joined the police, the APC, and the DSS. Our lawyers told me that. It is strikes law that when you sue a federal agency, FCT High Court has no jurisdiction to entertain it. Number two, the purported uh, suspicion of my person by my word. First, it's not even true. And I'm going to give you a document to that effect so you can form your opinion after reading it. Number three, I am not an officer of my word. I am the national chairman of a national party elected at a national convention by over 7,000 delegates. So how could nine persons sit down somewhere and purport that they have removed a national chairman? And the court, contrary to all logic, all judicial precedent, find comfort in granting uh, an interim uh, interlocutory order to stop me from functioning pending when the matter is determined. In other words, he has given the order without the facts being laid before him. And in the process, I joined the case to 7th of April. The calculations are clear that between now and April 7, my opponents in the system would have had ample time to do all the mischievous plans they have in place to destabilize the APC because some of them have membership of more than one political party. This is my take. It is incredibly sad that our government are increasing the debt of our great nation despite the fact that it is still high. I wonder, how will this debt be paid back? Obviously, the debt will be paid by the future generation, a generation that is innocent and probably not even born yet. You're gradually selling our country and you don't even know it yet. Nigeria is a blessed nation and can do well without such a huge debt. If you must take a loan, have a good plan for its repayment. And for the car loan for the new governor of Bielsa, I ask, of what gain is this to the people of Bielsa State? Bielsa is laden with hundreds of internally displaced persons on paid salaries and insecurity in major form of hurtmen. Where are your priorities? The budget for the state, which will show the plan of the government for the state for the year 2020, has not even been presented, not to speak of the passage. Dear leaders, your responsibility while in office is to your followers first, not to your comfort or your selfish interests. 
May the labors of our heroes pass, not be in vain. And that's all for the show for this evening. Thank you for staying with us. Until next week, be well.